Hi, I'm Heather. I'm from Goshen Health at Indiana, and I'm a WOC nurse. The greatest role that I see as a WOC nurse is the education I get to provide, um, not only for my patients, but also for the nurses. The nurses, um, even the certified nursing assistants, I get to walk around in one-on-one, -on -one, talk to them, and get them to sort of understand what my role is, what our role is together with the patient and our care together with that patient. And then just that, that those brief little moments together that we get to just sort of expound on, all right, we've got a stage one pressure injury, what are we gonna do? Or we've got an ostomy that's leaking, here's our goal of what we're gonna do for, for the patient. Um, so just, those little moments of education. And then for our hospital, we do a lot of um, new higher education and making sure that they, they understand what our protocols and procedures are for wound and ostomies and continence, um, the different products that we have and, and whatnot. So it's, it's a lot of fun education and, and getting to know where their level is and, and getting them up to, to speed on everything. For our ostomy patients, um, educating them is really intense, it feels like. I feel like I overload them with information, but we we do a really good job of breaking it up for them. So usually post-op or pre-op, we see them, we give them a lot of information of what is an ostomy, what it's gonna look like, why they're getting that ostomy, and everything like that. And then post-op, we see them on their post-op day one. Um, if they're feeling up to it, again, a lot of them are coming out of anesthesia, so a lot of them don't know what's really going on yet. Um, but Definitely that post-op time shortly after we get educating them about what to do with this ostomy now that they have it, how to pouch it, what's life going to be like for them at home. Um, sometimes we talk about diet and exercise changes and what needs to happen there. Um, it's a lot of where, where do they go after they have this. and. Um, sort of in-depth conversation with it. There's many times where I will walk into a patient's room and I, I will think, oh, okay, I've got 10 minutes, I can get this done. But it's at least an hour, sometimes longer, that I end up walking out of that patient's room and it's that hour that I spent with that patient really educating them um, and definitely involving their family or a, f a close friend, somebody else that really wants to take on that help with them because you as a patient, you hear one thing, and but as a patient's family or somebody else in the room hears another thing. And so I always say more ears are the best whenever we educate because it's way different when you get out of the hospital to remember exactly what we said. So we try to give them good resources too, um, giving them online resources, uh, booklets and pamphlets and everything like that. And then also making sure that we connect with them and we follow up with them and everything.